Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. I recently did a video where I showed how you could set up a simple point and click to move system for your character using the Unity Nav Mesh system. So here you can see me just clicking in, my character goes wherever I want. I had a question though about how to set up a system where the player could draw a path and then have the character follow it. Something like this. I can draw out an, a little line and then the character will follow the line wherever I tell him to go. Maybe I can modify it and draw a new line. Maybe do another one back here, right? So I want to show you how to set this up and then we'll also kind of clean up the other stuff that we had before. So instead of having everything in one script, we're going to split it into multiple. Just make it a little bit more manageable. So let's jump in and see how this is all done. The first thing I want to point out is we have a path creator game object and all this has on it is a line renderer and the path creator script. The line renderer is just to draw this line right here and for the material we just have a basic standard shader with no color set and then the uh, width of 0.2. This is just so that it's not that bright pink. For instance, we could go in here and change it though. If we wanted to have like a, a red line or something a little bit prettier, I'd imagine you'd want to make something nice. All right. So let's take a look at the path creator script though and see how this whole thing works. Let's go up to the top. First you can see we cached the line renderer in awake. This is just because we're going to be calling this a lot. And we could split the line renderer off into a whole separate script. And I probably would if we were building a bigger project. But for this sample I didn't want to get too complicated. We also have a list of vector 3's and these are the points that uh, the player has clicked on. So as you see me click in here, let's see it one more time. As you see me drag and watch each one of those little corners, those are one of the points. And these points are getting added to this array. The way that works, here let's go back to the code, is in the update method, well first if they push down the fire one button, so as soon as they first left click, we clear out that list. That's why every time you see me start drawing, the, the list is all empty and the line renderer is blank. But then as they hold it down, so this will be true for the first click and then every click, every frame after that where it's held down, we do a ray cast into the world and then we figure out the point that where they clicked. We could do a layer mask here so that we only check against the terrain. I skipped that part, but you may want to do that if you're actually building out a real system. Um, once we get the point where they've clicked, if they clicked on any mesh in the world that has a collider, we um, get the distance to the last point. So here we're just checking to see how far away from the last recorded point is this new point. If it's greater than one meter, then what I do is add it to the array of lists, or sorry, the list of points, and then I update the line renderer just so we can see where I'm drawing. Now if I'm done drawing and I release the button, this is when I call this on new path created action. So if I scroll back up here, you'll see we have a public action that takes an IE numerable of vector threes. An IE numerable is just an interface that lists and arrays and everything else. It's a collection like that, a generic collection will work fine with. So here we can pass in a list of vector threes when we call this. We could pass in an array. Um, it doesn't matter. This could also just say list of vector threes, but it'll just keep it more generic if we don't need to be very specific on the type. And then this on new path created, let's take one more look at where that's called. So here you'll see we just, when they release the button, we call, or when they release, yeah, I guess the left mouse button, when they release that, we call on path created for points. Now anything that's listening for this on new path created is going to get the method called and it's going to do whatever it's supposed to do. So let's check that out. Or first, I guess, let me real quickly glance over the uh, distance to last point. Here we just check to see if we have any points. If there aren't any, then we just return back math f dot infinity. So it's always going to be greater. So this first point basically saying like, yes, it's it's uh, been far enough. You don't have to worry about it. And otherwise, we just get the distance here and return that back. That was on the check right here to see if it had been far enough away from the previous point. So let's see how this on new path created is being used. So I'm going to hit shift F12 to find references and then if we look right here in the path mover script we have an awake call where we cache an avmes agent and then we find the path creator and listen for the on new path created. So when on new path is created or on new path created is called by the path creator script we call set points so that list of points is going to get passed in right here and then that is getting pushed into a queue of vector threes. And a queue is just a list or a collection of vector threes 
that are in order and we can add things to the end of the list and pull them from the front of the list. It's just like a um, any other queue or line in, in the real world, right? If you're in line at the store somewhere, the people in the front go out, people come into the back of the line, they go out from the front of the line, right? So this is gonna work just like that. Then in our update method, we just call a method called update pathing. This is just to make it a little bit more obvious what's going on. And we check to see if we should set a destination. If we should set one, which we'll check the logic behind in a second. Then we call navmeshagent.setDestination and we pass in pathpoints.dq. So again, this is just taking the first thing from that queue of pathpoints. So we'll take the first position or the next position essentially. Now should set destination just checks to make sure first that we actually have some path points. If we don't have any path points, we don't want to try to set a destination because there's nothing to set. And then we check to see if the nav mesh agent has a path. If it doesn't have a path, then we return true. If it does have a path and it's less than half a meter away from the point, we also return true. Now this is something that you'd probably want to adjust and maybe have it as a variable in your game so that you can you know control how close they actually get to the point before they continue to the next one. Let's jump back over to the editor one more time and take a quick look at the capsule. On the capsule you see we just have a nav mesh agent set up basically to defaults and then we have the path mover script and everything just kind of works. So that's essentially the whole system. You could of course expand on this and make something really cool. You could um, set it up so that you could perhaps select a character and then draw a path for them and select another character and draw another path. In that case you'd want to split off you know, maybe change how we do the event registration here. Maybe register and then deregister based off of if the object is selected or something. Or you could do it, you know, however you like that works for your game. So if you have questions about this, feel free to just drop a comment below or come by the site at unity3d.college and ask away. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and hit subscribe.